Another thing I really wanted to talk to you, um, David, is is about the universe and life. I know many people have their own personal understandings of it, but I really wanted to know, in your own beliefs, in your own opinions, what is the ultimate secret of the universe? The ultimate secret, I would suggest, is, uh, and it's not really a secret, because people have known about it since any time we know. It's just that in the mainstream that secret is a secret because it's suppressed from the population because the liberation that the knowledge of that secret gives you in terms of power and perception of self and reality is so powerful that a population with any number of people really, any sizable number of people in that awareness of this secret um, would never ever be able to be controlled by a few as people are today. And that secret is that we are, what are we? We are infinite awareness. People say, well, what are we? They look for form, they look for, for bodies, they look for this, they look for that. No, no. Just imagine. Awareness. Just awareness. And this awareness is infinite and this awareness interpenetrates everything. Whether it's a tree, a blade of grass, anything, that awareness is there. The, the, the question is, what scale of awareness are you accessing? And that comes from our, what I would suggest is our point, the point of attention of that awareness. What I mean by that is I'm, I'm infinite awareness. Uh, all that is, has been, and ever can be. All possibility. You know, people say, um, what do you mean all that is, has been, ever can be? You can't, do, you can, because what am I saying? I'm saying all possibility. And all possibility must be, every, must be uh, something that is and isn't. Something that is everywhere and nowhere. Something that is everything that has been, is, and can be. That's what all possibility is. So we are all possibility awareness. Point is, where is the attention of that? Uh, awareness at any point and what the, the body does the, the lens of the body is it focuses our attention um, into a tiny tiny range of frequency that science calls visible light which is so tiny it's almost infinitesimal it's it's laughable I mean humans are blind compared with what even mainstream science says exists beyond the the, the visible range um, and so that's our point of attention you can be in the body, in the world, in terms of your perception through the five senses. And you can also be beyond the world because your point of attention, while it is locked into the five senses, and should be because that's what we're experiencing here. Try experiencing this world without the five senses. Not, you know, you know big challenge, have a go. But you then expand your awareness. So it's not just that. It's actually the understanding that you are infinite awareness. That means you're in the world and interacting with it. And what the body does, see, our awareness, in its pure sense, could, I couldn't do that. Because that it would be on a totally different frequency to my infinite awareness in its pure sense. So we take on these outer shells that are, are within the frequency range we want to interact with, the body what I call the uh, biological uh, uh, computer or the cosmic spacesuit, biological spacesuit, and therefore I can, I can interact with the world. Um, but if you um, ha have this range of awareness into the true, the true sense of what we are, you realize that David Icke is not who I am, Luke is not who you are, it's the name for our current experience of infinite awareness. And your infinite awareness and my infinite awareness is the same awareness. It's just got two points of attention. One's called Luke and one's called David. Um, and once you realize that you are infinite awareness having an experience, then your, that knowledge can, can allow you to take control of the experience because you know it is, it, it is in your power to do that. If, and this is where the conspiracy, we can talk about the conspiracy on the five sense level, and I do um, all the time, but if we're really, really going to understand the basis of it, the foundation of it, we have got to get much, much deeper in an understanding of reality, because that's where the conspiracy is coming from. We see Bilderberg meetings and, and, and banks and all the rest of it, and we should investigate them. But where it's all coming from, 
are these inner inner sanctums that understand how reality works and therefore can manipulate a population that they have systematically um, misled and suppressed so that they don't understand how reality works and if you understand reality and, and, and the interactions of reality and how we create our experience by our, our sense of reality then there may be a few of you and the population may be billions but if you know how it works the population doesn't you are in a mega position of power and manipulation over the population so the last thing that the conspirators want is a population with an expanded state of awareness which is in this world to interact with it but is not of this world in the sense of its ultimate uh, point of observing the world it wants people in the five senses and in the world and of the world. Why? Because once you've um, removed people from that big picture filter where you see how the dots connect, suddenly the dots don't connect. What the five senses see are dots. They don't see connected dots. This is why the mainstream media, which is a five sense profession overwhelmingly, will talk about different elements of the world but will never connect them to see the picture and therefore the, the connections between them. And uh, so when you're in five sense mode and you, you've not got this bigger picture filter to um, see what's really going on, there's only one place you can look to get a fix on the world for from information that you are receiving to get that fix and that is this way and if you go that way what comes back in terms of information the mainstream media the education system mainstream stone age science and i'm i'm, I'm sorry stone age i was it's only an analogy um, and um, and, and all the other stuff that, that's coming back. In other words, what this is this conspiracy in one sentence. Pull people into people's sense of attention, point of attention, into the five senses, so that dominates everything. And then program that sense of attention in isolation from its true self with the information you want them to believe and the perception of self of the world you want them to believe gotcha and when we, well, what do we talk about Luke we talk about the fact that there's an awakening going on well what does that mean you know you just did the alarm clocks just gone off are we getting up what time what time is it no awakening another word for awakening or another phrase for ex uh, uh, awakening is the expansion of point of attention yeah. that's what it is so when people uh, expand that point of attention it's symbolically it's like the five senses is looking at this red thing which is a bit blurred what's going on and then as your point of attention expands you realize it's a brick and you realize it's a wall and you realize it's a it's a house and then you realize it's a town and a, and a city and a planet and, and you know and suddenly it makes sense yeah. but most people are looking at the blurry brick and saying um, this is the real world and it's really a world that we are program that we've been put into so we don't see the real world and there's a lot more to this world that we actually don't even see or perceive or understand and many people have actually uh, when, when they use DMT uh, they actually say that this helps them understand the greater understanding of everything we were talking about DMT last night and we talked how we had very similar experiences right. uh, when, when, when we were on it can you tell us about your experiences and what you took out of DMT well, I, I took it in the form of ayahuasca. I only took it twice in, in, in about three days in Brazil in 2003. I've not uh, touched it since, and uh, I don't feel the need to, but the, the experience I had was, yeah. was, was, was massive. And for me, what the, you know, people say, you know, um, it took me somewhere. Um, I don't think it takes us anywhere. I think it takes us to where we already are. And if we're in a, 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 neg a really deeply negative state, you can take this stuff and have a real, what they used to call in the 60s, a bad trip. Or if you're in a, another state, you can have a, a wonderful experience. Yeah. My experience was, was just unforgettable. I mean, I had a, a, a voice, a woman's voice, uh, which is, what is a woman's voice? Oh, it's just it's a woman talking to him. No, it's, it's, a frequency it is an information field of a certain frequency and certain frequencies you decode as female and certain frequencies you decode as male it's it's a consciousness that is communicating and almost certainly well, it has to be if we're all infinite awareness it's an expression of your own consciousness just a very much deeper level of it and um, and 
for five hours it talked to me about the illusory nature of reality and I had instant recall of every word afterwards um, which was amazing in itself um, and I was taken to a place um, oh, I'm using human language here taken to a place it's very hard to describe yeah. Yeah. and it's I tell you it's a it's a place that I experienced um, as beyond the realm of vibration because Every, anything that vibrates, oh, this is actually funny enough, uh, Luke, this is one of the, the, the many st really stunning lines that this, this voice communicated to me. Because when it started off, it said, we're going to take you to where, where you come from, so you, you will understand better where you are, and where you're coming back to. And then it kept repeating, this is right at the start of, of this, this, this voice starting, five hours. Infinite love is the only truth, everything else is illusion. And when you, you study near-death experiences and all that stuff, when they, they go into these realms beyond the body, I have never come across anyone that wanted to come back because they talk about this unbelievable uh, bliss and love and all the rest of it. And anyway, um, I uh, had this, this stunning line I was talking about at one point. It said, infinite love is the only truth. Everything else is illusion. If it vibrates, it's illusion because the pure, infinite all that is, all possibility, is still and silent. People think that things have to move to, to be something, and actually um, silence is all sound. It's all possibility waiting to manifest. So if I'm talking now, I have picked out of that infinite possibility of sound, I have picked out the words that I am talking. And when I stop, apart from the traffic, it's gone back into silence. Within the silence is everything. So I experience this as this silent stillness, as the infinite uh, point of attention. And I took the form of a... Uh, it, this sounds really funny. But if you've experienced it, people know what I mean. I saw it as a shining blackness. Shining blackness. Now, years later, um, in fact, in the last 12 months, there was a doctor called Eben Alexander. And he was, uh, in, I think he's in New York, and he was a um, neurosurgeon. I think he still is. And he was one of these rigid kind of, people. He admits it in his book. I was one of these rigid people. That, uh, he, he, you know, obviously people would have near-death experiences when he was doing his surgery sometimes and he, they'd tell him his, their stories and, and, and as he said I thought oh that's that's very interesting, a lot of rubbish but it's very interesting and, and it was like mainstream, this is not possible, this world is all there is. And then he got, a, um, it was a form of a, a meningitis that was so bad that his brain shut down in every area apart from the most primitive level that was necessary to keep him alive. This man, in effect, died for seven days. And this is the interesting point which he points out. When people talk about, and there's millions and millions of them now, when they talk about near-death experiences, the mainstream scientists, they go, oh, this is not impossible. And, you know, oh, please, God, save us from science. And, and anyway, uh, be, and because what they're doing is they're, they're just reliving their experiences from this part of the brain, and that's what's happening, and all that stuff. Well, that part of the brain, in his case, completely shut down. It was inactive, so it ain't coming from there. And, and he came back. He should, he should not have lived. That was a virtual impossibility for him to live. It was certainly almost absolutely impossible for him, if he did live, to be anything more than a vegetative state. And he came back uh, after a transition period completely normal and went on with his life. And he wrote this book about it, which became a New York bestseller. Why I'm telling you this story, it's very interesting, I think, is because when he first left the body and had a near-death experience himself, he entered a realm. I talk about this in, in, the, in the new book that's coming out in, uh, in the autumn. Um, he went into a realm that was classically the, the realm of the demons and the, uh, what I would call the, 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 the archons and the, the, the reptilian entities and all this stuff. In fact, he talks about seeing reptilian 
beings brushing against him and all that stuff. And then uh, a light came down um, and, and he was taken out, th what he called through the gate, into this amazing blissful place and on and on and on until, this is where I'm coming round to, he said he was taken to experience the, the, the ultimate, the, the, the source. And you know what he, he, just, he calls it? The dazzling darkness. Wow. Exactly yeah. what I experienced. Yeah. Um, and the dazzling darkness is mesmerizing because it is all that is, has been and ever can be. And then we pull that all, potential, all possibility, all potential into worlds of certain expressions of that potential and this is one of them um, and so um, that experience uh, with the ayahuasca DMT was was massively important for me because what I did then you know I, I, what I do when I research I don't just take one thing and then say well that's all right then uh, I came back to England and I looked at the mainstream science in all the different areas to see if I could f confirm that what was being said was true everything everything checked out the whole bloody thing and once you've got this point where you realize it's an illusion you can still interact with the illusion and live in the illusion but you know it's an illusion and illusions only control you when you think they're real this is why it's important to understand the nature of what, what we're, yeah. it, we're in. Because if we think this is solid and all the rest of it, what does solid say immediately? Limitation, can't be done. And yet, it's just a holographic proje uh, projection of, of infinite possibility, which is totally malleable and can be changed any time. It's fascinating, it's amazing because uh, just so people know, DMT is a natural reoccurring chemical in your brain. It comes out a little bit when you dream, but when you pass away, it's just flooded in your brain. And you could actually take it in the physical form and, and, and actually see what happens. I had the very similar experience, just blinding darkness, and then uh, a lady telling me the same thing, that love is the ultimate answer, love is the ultimate solution. It's, it sounds crazy, it sounds insane, but there's, there's a lot more to everything than, than we actually know. Yeah, though this is, a, this is an interesting point, yeah. because when you look at people um, in so-called history way back take Leonardo da Vinci and another guy who followed him in Italy very soon afterwards a couple of decades or so called uh, Giordano Bruno da Vinci is remembered by most people as the painter of the Mona Lisa the man was an absolute technological genius I mean I've seen documentaries about him and he was 500 years ago where they found his notebooks, interestingly one of the biggest collections of um, da Vinci's uh, drawings and stuff is at Windsor Castle and one of his notebooks is owned by Bill Gates. I mean these, these, these people know, you know, about a lot of this stuff, so they just keep it from us. Um, and this documentary took drawings and technical um, text which he wrote um, in these uh, notebooks and they tried to make it, and it worked. Um, Sikorsky, in, with the, the uh, development of the helicopters, said that he studied da Vinci's work on, on that form of flight, because da Vinci was obsessed with flying. And um, the first kind of armored tank-type vehicle he uh, drew and um, designed 500 years ago. An interesting thing too, in those days there was no copyright, so there was a fundamental flaw in every single thing that was in that notebook, everything he designed. What he'd done is take one part of it and turn it over the opposite way. So if anyone found the notebook, they wouldn't be able to build it, it wouldn't work, but, for, but he knew that. Why I'm telling you this story and why I'm going on to talk about uh, briefly uh, Giordano Bruno who was burned at the stake by the Roman Inquisition in 1600 for the crime of saying there are multiple worlds and supporting things like the, the earth goes round the sun and you know all the rest of it. Um, these people, when you read their stuff, um, were so far advanced of their era and what people say about them, even today, like da Vinci, is he was hundreds of years ahead of his time. He wasn't. He wasn't. He was beyond time, right? This is the key to understanding this stuff. We are within this frequency range I'm talking about with um, 
in the, within the five senses. And most people are held in that frequency range. That frequency range is a range of energy, which means a range of information. If you can expand your mind and go beyond that into those upper realms, you're going into another level of information, inspiration, insight, and understanding. Now, we think of a linear um, Stone Age through Middle Age, through uh, Victorian Age into Modern Age, and we see that progression. This level of awareness, this is, but that's just a, a sequence of events within this tiny frequency range. That level of awareness is always there. It has always been there. In the Stone Age, if anyone could have expanded their mind, they could have got into that level of insight. And all the people like da Vinci are doing, and um, uh, Bruno were doing, is in their era, when most people were so suppressed, not least in those days because religion was absolutely squeezing people's sense of perception, they were going into these realms where this knowledge existed. And when they bring it from, from the unseen into the seen, they're caught ahead of their time, and all they do is accessing the library. So when you talk about, you know, a female voice saying everything is love, and I talk about a female voice saying everything is love, and, and I see this sparkling darkness, and you see this sparkling darkness, and Eben Alexander, the doctor, sees the dazzling darkness, all you're doing is expanding your mind and going into that level of, of reality where you can experience these things and get the insight from them. It is so simple. But the worst nightmare of the conspiracy is having people go in there because they see the bloody conspiracy. So you've got to keep them here, and that's what it's all about. That's what microchipping's about. That's what um, uh, transhumanism is all about. It's about fusing uh, microchips and fusing technology with the body to stop it being its true, uh, uh, its true design, which is to uh, be a vehicle for the body to um, experience this reality, but also allowing consciousness to expand beyond. They want to stop the second bit. That's what the microchip's about, really. I mean, many other things, but certainly that. Fascinating stuff. I know we were only supposed to do five minutes. I oh, think we went way you over do that. Five minutes with yeah. me. I've got verbal diarrhea. Uh, amazing stuff. I just want to thank you so much for everything, Pleasure. David. DavidIke.com. Check out the website. And Cheers, uh, just fascinating. People's Appreciate voice. it. He's on it. This idea of us challenging like the young people of We Are Change and like Luke Rutkowski. I mean, there are some young people who have decided that they're just going to put, they're going to do The government shouldn't be telling you what you can put in your body as, as an adult. That's just silly. And it's just getting people to understand that on a more, not just food, you know, that applies to everything, that you are in charge of